screen too. Go ahead. Um, all right. So, um, well, let me just uh, let me see if I could do a little bit of Philip's background um, while we're waiting on on him to actually show up. Um, so I don't know if he's explained any of this, but let me let me try for him. Um, the uh, the uh, uh, the primary reason I'm here, and I'm gonna, what I'm going to be talking about is. Um, uh, storage management, a brand new storage management standard coming out a little bit uh, that we've been working on for a couple of years, and I'll be giving a bunch of background and, and showing um, uh, some a bunch of uh, what that looks like and, and some of the tools and things around that. Uh, primary rationale for that is um, uh, is that you know. Um, you guys have been working on, you know, the CSI layer, and while that gives you kind of access to um, standardization for creating containers, um, it doesn't really give a way to go down to the next layer um, and actually configure the storage. And so, what Philip brought me in to do was talk a little bit about what's going on elsewhere in the, you know, in in the uh, data center um, enterprise management ecosystem standards world around um, how to you know approach that part of the system and so um, that's kind of what I'm gonna be talking about so I, I'm Rochelle Alvers I um, I work at Broadcom and um, making sure I have the right set of slides here since I thought I deleted that but that's okay um, and I'm also the chair of, of the technical work group in SNEA. SNEA is the Storage Networking Industry Association. It's been around for 20 some years now. Um, we develop standards uh, in the storage space. Um, we partner with the, desktop, or the DMTF, which develops standards for uh, largely servers and networking and, and other p parts of the uh, um, uh, e the uh, ecosystem for you know end-to-end -end, uh, management um, and so standard disclaimer slide everything subject to change without notice um, everything you want to see and find around what I'm going to be talking about is snea.org slash swordfish um, so you know, SNEA we have we're, it's a worldwide organization we like I said we've been around for a long time um, and has a lot of companies involved. Um, so what Swordfish is, um, we have had storage management standards for a long time. They've really been focused on um, traditional storage management uh, and enterprise data centers. Uh, and so what we've started to do, and we started this um, three, two, three years ago now. So this is really something that's um, the standard has been developed and we're just starting adoption. I'd like to highlight, you know, where we are. Um, you're not going to find a lot of Swordfish deployments out there. What you start to see is a lot of people that have, you know, POCs and things like that. We have actually this week at Flash Memory Summit, the first, um, the, you know, first uh, shipping implementation being announced. Um, and, but what, what Swordfish is, is kind of a new standard that's actually shifting away from just focused on um, in enterprise data centers towards something that we're expanding to be more, well, I hate the term, but more modern, <laughs> but, um, and also something that we can put on, um, on, on, on storage um, devices and infrastructure that goes into um, broader environments. So not just DAS, not just SAN, but, um, Infrastructure that goes into converged hyper converged hyperscale, uh, you you name it, right? So you know all of the you know the the product that's coming out this week is an NVMe over Fabric device, as an example. Um, so clearly not enterprise uh, enterprise SAN products. Um, so what I'm going to do is you know just really kind of give you an intro to the to Swordfish. Um, the concepts, you know, what kinds of things it covers, um, and also talk a lot of, about, you know, the tools and the ecosystems and stuff you can actually go play with to get a sense of it. Um, not going to go in depth. We can come back and if anybody's interested in that and talk more about that at another time. 
Um, so, you know, what, what were the, I've actually talked a little bit about this already. What were the drivers? Um, you know, the, there were drivers about, you know, um, what, what were things that we did wrong with the previous ones? Uh, they were very vendor centric. Uh, we've, we've shifted to make swordfish, um, very, uh, client centric. Uh, very customer centric this time, so very use case centric uh, in terms of, of how we built the API. It doesn't include every function from every vendor or every possible um, attribute from every product. And again, you know, um, we've also moved to a more DevOps centric. Um, storage is not necessarily managed by storage, um, you know, dedicated storage managers anymore. Um, so we, we tried to take that into account. Um, the, so, so what did we do? Uh, what, we, what we actually did here was we took, um, we didn't start from scratch. Um, we find that's kind of a silly approach and takes a long time. We, we started from um, existing base of knowledge. One of the things we did, and this has been, um, it's not a, you know, a property-based system. It, we moved to a class of service-based provisioning and monitoring uh, 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 API. We, so um, I'll talk more about that as we go, but that's a very key point. Um, this basically allows, you know, a much richer um, and, and much more abstract way to provision systems. Um, you don't have to think about all of the, the low level properties uh, and, and you know, know all of, the, all of those low level details anymore. Uh, so covers all of the, you know, things you would expect, block file and object. We're, we're not focused on, you know, tape and, and all of those kinds of things in this set, set of APIs. Um, and you know how do we do that? So again, not starting from scratch, um, the DMTF and server folks have been looking at some some similar types of challenges. Um, so in the server management space, they had a whole proliferation of management standards that largely were being used by the server vendors to you know for proprietary you know and, and server based uh, vendor based products. Um, Smash and Dash, and then IPMI, and IPMI has a whole set of challenges itself. So, you know, Redfish was had started as a consortium among the server vendors, but it had a whole bunch of stuff we need. And frankly, when you build a lot of storage management, a lot of storage systems are built using the same components you use to build servers. So we uh, had a lot of the stuff we wanted. So we said, well, we'll just build on top of that. We're going to reuse, literally reuse everything. Swordfish is an extension. It, um, we we leveraged their protocol 100%. Um, we do not deviate from their protocol specs. We extend it, uh, and anything that's a shared component is a shared component. We extend it if we need to, but we do not change it. Um, uh, we may restrict particular pieces of it, but we do not um, fundamentally uh, change the components. Um, okay, and so this is one that I thought you guys might also find really useful since, you know, if you don't have any exposure to this kind of stuff, uh, you know, seeing, um, you know, who's, this is a list of who is at currently actively participating between the two groups. Um, there have actually been a whole bunch of other companies kind of coming and going from working on this stuff at various points. This is the kind of the current list. You know, one of the things that's interesting is Microsoft used to be participating in both and it's now only on the server storage side. Um, which sounds weird. You might think, well, you might expect them to be on the server side instead of the storage side. Um, you know, things like HP Inc. They're actually highlighted or italicized here because they're supporting Redfish. They're sponsoring it, but they're not actively participating. Because kind of means they're throwing money in, and they're a consumer of it, but they're not actively driving this back. Um, there have been, I would say, probably, I. I I'm going to say at least 20 or 30 more companies that have actually been members and, and participating and contributing um, that have been on this list at some point that have you know dropped off or and they're when I was creating this list yesterday 
I think I added about six or seven new companies from the last time I updated this list about three months ago. So there's a lot of interest. There's a lot of companies that have been participating. Um, Redfish is about two years older than Swordfish. Uh, and they're, they actually do have quite a few shipping implementations. All of the major server vendors, um, HP, HP Enterprise, um, Cisco, Dell, Lenovo, and I missed, uh, let's see, uh, I'm missing a couple, uh, Ericsson, um, well, let's see, they're, uh, somebody else have had implementations, one more I'm spacing, um, have had implementations since about 2016 and, and are iterating on those. So there's um, quite a bit of, of uh, momentum in the market towards this. They started with simple implementations and have been driving those forward. Um, I'm talking kind of fast. That's partially because I've had a fair amount of caffeine this morning. <laughs> partially that's just my normal speed. But feel free to, you know, you know, uh, raise your hand in, in Zoom or whatever if you have questions because um, there's, um, I'm going through quite a bit of, of, of background and, and stuff here and I'll get through quite a bit of information. Um, but feel free to interrupt at any time if you have questions. Um, okay, so so what's in, in the system and, and, how, and how do we build it? Um, so Swordfish includes, you know, I've already mentioned block file um, and we will cover object we cut we have object drive in here now um, it will be really easy to extend to object we just haven't had anyone any companies step up to say we will do the detailed modeling for that um, but we we fully intend to cover object um, we have a lot of interest in in object but not to the extent that anyone has stepped up and said we'll we'll do that modeling for you um, so uh, block, as I mentioned, provisioning with class of service controls, volume mapping and masking replication, you know, capacity and health metrics, um, pretty much everything you'd expect in a complete, you know, full, a, a full API set. Uh, and file system, um, the way we did file systems is actually really, I think, really nice. We basically took the block and said, it's going to be exactly like that, except with just two new schema on top. So we add the file system and file share. So it is identical infrastructure. There's no deviations. It's not, it's not a divergent model at all. Um, it just, you layer file system and file share on top of it. Um, <clears throat> so it's a, it's a very clean, uh, very clean um, file system implementation. Um, okay, and so then how does it work? Let me actually make this one bigger so that, oh, hang on, let me just, okay. Um, so, because otherwise the boxes are really small. Uh, so how does the, the whole thing structured? Um, so as I mentioned, we, we start with Redfish um, and the, there's, different ways to do REST. Um, the, this model uses a, a fixed route um, of a, everything starts with slash redfish slash v1 and we call this the service route. Um, and so in the service route, a server is broken down and there's actually, it's gotten a little bit more complex over time, but um, that basically works, breaks down into the collections which are um, think of these as, you know, collection is the term for an array of the of of objects. So this is the array, you know, a group of of systems, a group of chassis, a group of managers. The managers are either a physical or logical manager. So for a server, it's like a BMC. Um, <clears throat> the system is the logical view of the system. The chassis is the physical view of the system. You'll see some things in there. They're like, hmm, why is that there? just how a committee decided it. So, you know, that, keep that in mind. Um, and so, and then there's a set of services over here. So session service, account service, event service, log service. Uh, there's also uh, things for schemas. Uh, there's then some bunch of enhancements around uh, tasks, job services, 
uh, privilege mapping and things like that. So you'll see a whole bunch of other services there in, in, a, in, in the versions today. This is just kind of a relatively simple representation. Um, and then for each instance, you'll see, you know, uh, uh, collections of things like processors and my things got truncated here for some reason, processors, disks, NICs, um, all the kinds of things you'd expect to see represented in a, in a, in a system. And then in the chassis, um, the decision was made to make, you know, power and thermal collections and information down in here. So that's kind of how a system's modeled. So what we did when we went to add Swordfish, we said, well, yep, you can have all of those things in, um, in storage as well. So we're just going to keep all of that and extend it. So what we did was extended that. We have two kinds of models for two, you know, two fundamental ways you can construct a storage system. The first one is, um, think of this as how you might model a, and there Philip's on. Um, Philip, I did your introduction of me and probably rather badly and what we were doing. So um, the, uh, this is what we call, you know, the hosted service configuration. This is really kind of how you would model a lot of things, like uh, an external storage uh, system or even uh, software-defined storage, um, where you have all of this stuff down here would be, you know, the physical infrastructure uh, or the logical infrastructure that you would host your host your store or your storage system on, and then. These two pieces, the purple stuff is is all of the new swordfish part. And so the storage system, these really break down into a storage system and a storage service. So a, a storage system is really a logical system. This might be a physical controller or or a virtual controller. And it's modeled so the same way you have that processor down here. This is actually a logical instance of a system. Um, so instead of a processor disk, you have a controller and disks and NICs. Um, and I'm getting a notice that my internet connection is unstable, so let me know if I if it starts being a problem or not. Um, and then, but really the, the, the core of Swordfish is in this storage service. This is where we have all of our you know, classes of service that we talked about, that I've mentioned briefly, and, and, and things like storage pools and volumes or files or replicas or endpoints and you know volume you know and all of these things which is really when you go to manage your storage um, the core of it and so again these are collections so you can have multiple instances of these same way you could have multiple controllers um, and I said I mentioned two configurations like I said this would be you know typical external storage or this could be you know software defined all that kind of thing I'm waving at my screen which you can't see um, the, 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 adi the additional one would be, well, what about something like server attached or um, JBoss or something like that? Well, we have another model and we call this the integrated service configuration. And this might be one where you might have a system with a storage controller <clears throat> and then, and that it, you know, plugs directly into a system. Uh, and then you instantiate a storage service from that. And so then we have this, basically this alternate model. And so it's a, instantiates a little bit more simply, but where you have kind of a physical, um, this, this simpler physical storage controller model, but then you still have exactly that same, the, same, the ability to instantiate those same storage services. Um, and so, um, you know, from a, a client perspective, you know, in either model, they may or may not be interested in any of those that storage system um, or storage controller, depending on what their use cases are. They may only ever be looking at the storage services. But these are you can see these are exactly that same that same storage services. Okay. Um, any questions on either of that? Any of that so far? Hey, Michelle, just one question. I see uh, BMC is showing here. I'm just wondering, uh, it's just, I mean, this is the one company, right? But I'm not, not seeing other companies showing in this. Oh, uh, no. Yeah, B BMC actually stands for a baseboard management controller. 
So oh, this could be was, doing that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, so this, this, you know, an ILO or an IDRAC uh, or whatever, um, or for um, a storage implementation, um, you know, it, this could actually be um, a uh, embedded management controller or something like that. Or if a system doesn't have it, it could actually be pure software. Um, it's just a kind of a representation of. Okay, um, now no, I got it. I was, I was wondering. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thanks. Um, okay, so um, if we want to actually look at, you know, what swordfish things might actually look like, um, we've, we put the, the twigs, both redfish and swordfish, work with mock ups. And so we publish our mockups. Um, these are all just static. Um, we publish our, a bunch at swordfishmockups.com. And so you'll see them at swordfishmockups slash redfish slash v1. Um, so what I'm going to do is actually switch over. My slide set actually has a few samples in here too. Um, but um, what I was going to do, since a lot of times I can't actually, I, I'm only allowed to work through PowerPoint. So, um, but I'm, <clears throat> I don't actually have that limitation today. Um, so I have to like just do screenshots. But so this is our uh, mock-up site and um, you know, pardon the crappy website. This is, you know, I threw it together quickly and uh, haven't bothered to go back to it. But this basically describes, you know, all a bunch of our different configurations. So we have, um, we actually have five different systems out here, but one of them is, we have that hosted service configuration. It's kind of like, here's a system that's got a whole bunch of different, you know, kind of all the different permutations in there. And then a, one that's an integrated service configuration. Um, and then one that's got a file service in there and it kind of describes all of them. And then, um, so if we go over here and it's kind of tiny, um, you know, if you just go to flush redfish slash v1, here's basically what a service route might look like. So you guys, this one, um, so you can see, you'll see slash systems and storage systems. Um, storage systems will just alias to the subset of things that in systems that are storage systems. Um, this is kind of a weird, the mock-up systems is a little weird because in a real system, you'd probably only have one, um, depending on the configura you know, configuration. If it's a host-based managed storage, or storage manager, you might have multiples, but in a lot of systems, you'd only ever be seeing the single system you're talking to. And then you have chassis and managers, and then some of these services like tasks, and session, account, and events. Um, and so that's just some of the, oh, the copyright is that, how do I get, no, fix that copyright. Um, so if we navigate down through, you can either kind of just type them all directly you know, and navigate around this way, or you can use your favorite REST client. Um, and you can see these around, so, or you can, use, you know, go over here and, you know, you just use your favorite REST client. The mockups are, oops. Well, that's odd. All right. Well, I'll go the other way since it's clearly working over here and not there. Um, but you, we can just kind of wander around through. Um, as with any REST API, you don't actually need to know the schema. Um, so this is that large configuration and you can see all of these various pieces. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna go back over and wander through the ISC configuration. Um, this is basically a server attached storage configuration and this is the storage service connected to it. So you can see it actually shows that I have, you know, class as a service defined storage pools, volumes, and, and drives. Um, down here, it, it, it talks about um, capabilities. What these capabilities are is just defines what capabilities are defined in this service that I can use to create class lines of service and then eventually classes of service. That's how classes of service work. Um, I'm not going to go through all of that, but what I will do is actually just show what classes of service are defined. Um, 
so I have two classes of service. What what I've actually got configured on this system is all I use is um, it's a very it's a fairly simple configuration. What I use for classes of service is basically I just automatically sort um, my pools based on drive type. Um, that's all I did in this particular mock-up. So if I go down to my storage pools, it basically sorts by SAS or SATA, and I've named them that way. Um, so I've got um, a SAS, you know, a SAS pool, an R5, a RAID 5 SAS pool, and a SATA pool. So I've used underlying capabilities of my system automatically configured it so that I can um, uh, so that I can configure which which um, you know automatically segregate my my system so you know that's a there's a there's a lot of, of abilities that we've got mapped into class of service this is one that to me was just fairly obvious is like you can take something that you know the system's already capable of some you know some policy or, or property in this case, it's an IO connectivity capability, um, and map those into classes of service. Clearly, you can do performance, but you can also do connectivity. Um, you can do um, uh, there's there's you know five or five different sets of capabilities that you can use. This is this is one that just is a really easy one one to explain. So I like to use it as helps people visualize classes of service pretty easily. Um, Okay, uh, let's see. Um, so one of the things we can do here is, um, you know, you can, nav you know, navigate around and, and, you know, just look, we can, at this one, we can just kind of look around and see what's, how the system's configured. This one happens to be fully consumed. Um, but, you know, if you wanted to go through and see if there was space to, to do additional configuration, we can wander through one of the other systems um, and say, hmm, let's go look at this storage pool and see if there's any space left to be able to, to go in and um, create another volume. So I go down here and say, huh, there's capacity consumed. Nope, there's no space left in this pool. So I can't create another volume there. Maybe the other pool has some. And why look, I can, you know, I can do some quick math here and say this one actually has some space. So here's, I can use this pool to create another volume. Um, so that's how you could actually just navigate around depending on what you're trying to do. Um, and that's just kind of a real quick, you know, view of how you can, you know, without knowing anything about the system, you could move around and, and, and actually try and try and um, figure out something really quick to do. Okay, so that's um, that's a little bit about about um, Swordfish and, and the API, even a little bit about the classes of service. So let me pop back out of that. Any questions on that or anything you guys want to see? I can tootle around a little bit here if, you, if there's anything specific you want to take a look at. Michelle, I have a question. Uh, uh -huh. So uh, by reading the spec, it's not clear to me what are required and what are not required. So if we want to implement okay. something, yeah. Okay, so that's actually, I will perfect lead into my next section here. So oh, let me go down here. Um, so one of the things we're adding in, there's actually multiple places. If you, if you just look at the schema, there's actually very little required. Um, and and the spec adds a little bit more onto that, but the way the real way to figure out what you actually what you actually need to implement is through um, what we call what we're calling profiles, and we're we're just getting to this. Um, so the uh, profiles are sets of required functionality based on features. So what a client will actually do is say. Um, you know what what features do you support and will advert you know applications will, or uh, implementations will advertise features they'll say i support block discovery events performance provisioning 
and um, you know basically be guaranteeing that and then the actual there's a, there's a whole profile language will say you know in order to say that you do that um, let me just give like a, the, the, the discovery example that basically translates to for that what that means is that for every object you support get of not just the object but every property on that object and then for those configurations I just talked about for HSC or for the ISC configuration that means there's a specific set of objects that you will support um, and so you support get on uh, you know uh, a storage service a storage pool volume blah 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 uh, down the list and so there's some set of those that you not only have to have you know if you have that object you have to support this so um, like you have to have a volume collection now it doesn't mean you have to have any volumes created yet but you have to support having them you, you have to support the ability to create them does that make sense um, and then so for basic provisioning you have to support um, doing posts and deletes on that volume collection for so if you say I, I support basic provisioning on block you have to support um, uh, a post and delete on a on block on uh, the volume collections you have to support being able to create you know so there's a hierarchy there um, but that's that's how um, that's how we both advertise that and um, and uh, the, so the client can come in and say um, what do you support what, what is this what is this implementation support and it says I support basic provisioning for block then you know that that's going to mean that um, the implementation is guaranteeing that you'll be able to um, allocate volumes um, and so there's a whole you know hierarchy of stuff that the client that the implementation is actually doing behind the scenes um, but um, that's that's how you basically uh, um, that you know that's that's where all of that you know what do I actually have to do comes in so the client gets this view and then there's a whole language and you know what this translates to for our one of those for one of those configurations that the implementation we'll see um, so they'll have we're, we're developing the tools around that now that basically says this is what this means you actually have to implement and then there's going to be some tools that help check help the implementations check and verify that they're actually able to advertise these things um, so that's that's um, we're hoping that and we're, we're right in the middle of getting ready to get because it's a rel relatively complicated you know chain of, of uh, you know X means Y means Z <laughs> all the way down um, so that we can advertise these things um, what we're what we've this is something we learn we've we've gotten a lot of feedback from our clients over the years um, SMIS had profiles as well and would advertise them but um, I think the count was 180 some profiles that they would advertise and so what we're trying to do is move to this much simpler model that says we advertise right now you can see my current proposal and this is the that I should I should put a disclaimer on this this is the proposal we're about a month away from having um, uh, having a whip go out a work in progress go out that uh, uh, defines all of this um, that says we, we will advertise you know this matrix of block you know these services with these features and we we'll want to start it at this list of about eight it'll probably grow from there um, and then you know this maps to you know the details of the you know exact objects for the various configurations um, uh, so we I, have those uh, profiles ready by the SNEER conference in September right we we hope so yeah um, we're 
<laughs> we've been, uh, Philip, how long have we been discussing the profiles and, and the approach uh, since about January? Um, and I think we, we, we hope, we hope that we're, we're putting together some, some presentations and some alignment around it now that we, we should have the whip of the concepts and everything. Um, we're trying to get that done this month and have that out before SDC. And then we'll need to be developing the tools to, to validate all of that. Um, uh, so we're, we're hopeful that we can have that done this month. I may be overly hopeful, but we're hopeful we can have that done this month. So, Philip, I asked you a question and then I talked right over it, so. Uh, you asked me a question about how long we've been working on them. Yeah, well, and yeah, I think I think it's been about. Yeah. It starting about January. I think so. Okay. Yeah, so we would be very interested in this because uh, um, working on OpenSDS, we are defi defining our profiles based on Swordfish. So if you guys are actually uh, defining profiles, I uh, would like to de definitely like to take a look. And the leverage of that. Yeah. Ying, yeah. Uh, question about that. Are your profiles uh, the same thing or are your profiles classes of service? Because I always got confused moving back and forth between oh, OpenSDS. Yeah, so we are actually probably pick and choose, so it may not be exactly uh, what you guys are doing. So because we uh, we use the, some of the um, the capabilities, like the uh, like the one that you're showing earlier, the um, IO Connecty. Line, yes, actually, line of service, our connecting line of service, those those things. Yeah. So the classes of the classes of service is what would be used for determining storage scheduling, right? Trying to figure out uh, placement and 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 you know what what the services that a, client, a customer is asking for on a provision request, right? Mm -hmm. um, whereas profiles are just identifying you know what features and capabilities uh, the um, the device is capable of handling, right? There's a slight difference between the two. Okay, yes, yeah, so definitely I'd like to see uh, how you're defining those. Okay, so yes, the class of service stuff is all, uh, has been defined for quite a while. The uh, um, the profiles, we have the, the profile language, um, and then it's the <clears throat> feature set is, we're trying to lock down right now on the feature set and then map the, between the feature set and the profile definition. So the profile definition will be kind of the provider side and the feature side, the feature definition side will be what we advertise to the clients. Hmm. Um, and that's really separate from the class of service stuff. Yeah. The, and I think that's the distinction is that the class of service stuff is really around um, you know, if, if I got a, a CSI request for um, uh, a particular volume of a particular set of uh, characteristics, uh, I would use the class of service uh, to figure out, you know, where I'm going to place that. Whereas the profile is kind of identifying what this particular Swordfish implementation is capable of doing, right? Am I correct? Yeah. Right, this is how a client says, you know, determines what functionality, yeah, basically how capable the system is, yeah. right? Are they, are they capable of local rep, rep, replication, remote replication, you know, is it how, how advanced is the system? And, you know, we may actually add at some point, you know, um, features that, advertisement of features around how advanced the class of service capabilities they have too. But that will be in the next round. Like I said, we're trying to keep the list of profile um, things small, but if we have um, this, and this is kind of targeted our classic clients um, at this point. So if we have other types of clients come in that are like, you know, want to know um, more in, in, in kind of a different direction, and we can add those those kinds of features as well. Um, okay, let's see. So 
Um, the other thing I wanted to kind of show is a little bit about the tools and infrastructure. I mean, I showed the, the mock-ups, right? So we have the mock-up site. The other thing I wanted to kind of show is a little bit about some of the stuff we have developed so that folks can go and play. Um, because that's really what we all want to do, right? Uh, so one of the things we have um, so that you can actually go play with swordfish is we have a swordfish emulator. Um, so the, and, and these are, we have four basic sets of tools here. So one of which is the emulator. You can get that at GitHub on our open source GitHub site. Um, it extends the Redfish emulator. The Redfish emulator is not fully dynamic, but the Swordfish emulator actually is. So I have an instance of the emulator here. Um, uh, and I, it, you can basically do puts, patches, um, posts, and everything to, it, it's not intelligent, it's not going to behave like a real system, but you can, you know, uh, manipulate it um, quite, quite a bit. Um, and one of the things we've actually we actually have going on is we have a, a a researcher down at Texas Tech who has taken and is building a virtual data center uh in containers and they are um we they'll have that on display at s d c um and we hope to have an instance of that stood up soon in our tech center in our the senior tech center as well. Um, but they're hoping to build an emulated scale-out data center um, with, uh, you know, large-scale storage system. So they'll have both ISC configurations as well as HSC um, uh, style systems and have some, you know, small, a bunch of small configurations as well as some extremely large emulated um, uh, storage configurations. So some with, you know, multi-thousand volume, um, multi, you know, hundreds of thousands of drives, thousands of volumes kinds of systems um, in containers, um, so simulating a, you know, very large data center, data centers um, all built using the emulators. Um, and so that's, that's available, um, works reasonably well. Um, we've been finding and fixing bugs, but it, it um, is, is available uh, we also have the Swordfish web client, which I had started on my system, and now I don't see the thing for, so give me one second, I will. Um, and the other one that I wanted to show um, is we have these two sample um, integrations we built just to give people kind of a sense of the things you could do. Um, and so one of the I was going to show I'm just going to show the Power BI one because I have that up and running on my system. We basically built two different dashboards. Um, we use Power BI and Datadog because they have largely because they have two different kinds of, of potential integration spots. Um, the the uh, let's see I'm going to start I'm sorry I'm starting the basic web client up while I'm at it. Um, the uh, so Power BI basically. Um, this isn't, sorry, I don't have this loaded completely. This is the working pane. Um, but the uh, Power BI dashboard, um, Power BI is kind of a point in time snapshot. So what we built here was basically a, uh, th this this view basically shows um, kind of a what, what you might want to look at from a point in time. So this one basically um, built talking to emulators. Um, we have all the documentation that says how you can either recreate this one, you can basically bring this one up and just change it, um, or you can, it, documentation tells you how to recreate it completely. What this one does is it was talking to an emulator that had four storage services on it, um, and, you know, just a snapshot view of, you know, what's the consumption, uh, capacity consumption across them. And then it has these, um, uh, sub dashboards of the various storage services. And so if we go look at one of those um, sub dashboards, what you get here is, you know, a kind of a drill down into that. So you've got, um, here's the number of storage pools and file systems in this one, because this one's file service. Um, some consumption, you know, utilization across the file systems and storage pools. Um, this again, more, capacity information and then you can actually go drill down into um, into that and then one of the things that Swordfish has is a threshold 
um, user settable thresholds. And so this actually shows these, this one had them set at 60 and 90. You can, so it, it has an overlay of these, so you can just kind of see where these are across this particular, this, uh, oop, across this particular um, file, uh, file system. It hasn't hit either of these, uh, but uh, this one has weird data on it, <laughs> loaded weirdly. Um, and but um, you can see you know if it hit one in the middle it would it would show the overlay there um, in Datadog what we actually have is uh, the um, it's a trending over time so we've used the same kind of data this is just point in time snapshot so you've actually what we've actually done is built up some some um, trending over time you know capacity triggers so and integrations that people can use out of the box. And there's sample code for all of these online. Um, what we've also got is the sample a basic web client that will automatically talk to uh, any of the uh, any swordfish service. I'm just going to talk to my emulator here. And um, it'll just bring up and display that same uh, service route here, and then we can go down and navigate around. It's also got the ability to I've actually added you can I, I can add storage services. I can these are ones I've put in before. I can just say. Delete that one. Go back into storage. Or, oop. Remove. There we go. I deleted that one. Um, so I can modify properties. Oh, let me go into an actual object and modify its properties. So I go down here and I can, you know, rename things. Uh, so it's a Basic client just sorts things out, but makes it a little bit easier to look at look at systems rather than navigating through REST clients. These are just kind of tools to help people get started and and play around with with the systems. Um, so I just hit the top of the hour, uh, Philip. I think we had a couple of wrap up items. Yeah. But yeah. So. Uh, um Trying to figure out where, um, what, what kind of, you know, the whole reason I, I wanted to bring this here was that I knew that um, uh, people were building uh, storage management solutions for clouds, right? I mean, that's what the, the CSI effort is about. That's what Open SDS is about. Um, and I wanted to make sure that there was uh, knowledge of, of the standards work that's going on and that, um, you know, we see a lot of activity by um, almost all the major players uh, in this space. And that, so that uh, we want to make sure that as you guys are developing these solutions, you're aware that these, this uh, swordfish and redfish standard is coming, coming towards you, right, from, uh, from the major vendors and array vendors uh, uh, in play in the industry today. And that, you know, you should take, take into consideration the standard and, and, uh, and, you know, if we can help with anything, uh, help explain it, you know, we're, we're happy to do these presentations or do, um, do anything we can do to help assist people to use it. So, uh, let us know if there's any questions or anything we can do, um, uh, to support, uh, your development efforts. And I think that's it. Is anybody there? Yeah, yeah, thanks. Yes. So that was a good presentation. Hey, thank you. All right. All right, if you guys have any follow-up, yep, if you have any follow-up questions, just let us know. Thanks, Michelle and Philip. Thank you. Yeah, bye. 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 bye.